making a tuna noodle casserole is pretty easy to do. However, if you have a small kitchen appliance that can pressure cook and then air crisp, it takes it to a whole new level of ease. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to make a classic tuna noodle casserole with a few twists in the Ninja Foodie pressure cooker and air crisper. Welcome to the Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life using real food and we keep it real simple. And today we're gonna make a very basic tuna noodle casserole in the Ninja Foodie pressure cooker and air crisper. Now this can be done if you don't have the Ninja Foodie pressure cooker and air crisper, you can certainly do it in your Instant Pot Duo Crisp, or if you have another pressure cooker with a crisping lid, you can do it that way, or you can also do it on the stove and in the oven. So really, you can make this any way. You don't need any special appliances. However, the Ninja Foodi pressure cooker and air crisper seems to really make this super, super easy to do. It's pretty much dump, set, forget, finish it off, and then eat. It's perfect, I love it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is add in our ingredients to pressure cook. So we're gonna pressure cook our pasta with our tuna, some spices, a little bit of butter, and some liquid, and then we'll mix in the rest of the ingredients and put the crisping lid down, and we'll get this nice, crispy coating on top that we all know and love. All right, the first thing I have here are two cans of the white albacore tuna fish in water that I drained. So I think each can is about five, five and a half ounces. I use two cans. You could use three if you wanted to put more in. You could use one. That would make no difference in the recipe whatsoever. If you wanted to use um, the light tuna instead of the albacore, that's fine. You can do that as well. And then I have eight ounces of extra wide egg noodles, and the, that's what I prefer to use. I'm sure you can switch up the pasta if you wanted to and just um, adjust your cooking times. So we're gonna dump those eight ounces into the pot. Now, a lot of times people will ask me, can I double the noodles? I wanna make a double batch of this. So the idea with the tuna noodle casserole is that you have the perfect amount of serving underneath the crispy topping. That's what makes it so delicious. So if you were to double this, you're still gonna have the same amount of topping. So it might be a little off as far as ratios go. You certainly can do it, and I'll go over how to do that in my written post. Uh, but for this recipe, I found it really worked great with the eight ounces. And it makes a lot. It makes a whole lot, you'll see. Then I'm going to dump in the tuna. Dump that in. Our spice blend is super easy. It is a quarter teaspoon of black pepper, a half a teaspoon of fine grind sea salt, and please don't mistake that for table salt. If you wanna use table salt, cut that in half or even by a quarter, and a half of a teaspoon of onion powder. We're just gonna go ahead and sprinkle that on top. You wanna use between a half and a whole onion. It's up to you completely. This is a about probably a half of a cup of diced onion that I diced in about a quarter inch dice, but I wasn't too particular about that. All right, three cups of water. Now, I am using water because I'm gonna use a vegetable base by Miners, okay, because I didn't wanna add chicken into this, but if you wanted to use chicken broth, you could use three cups of chicken broth, that would be fine. Three cups of vegetable stock, that would be fine, uh, would work out fine. But I happen to have this, I love it, and it, Oh my gosh, the flavors are amazing. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix that with the three cups, if I can get it out of here, three cups of plain water, just to sort of combine it a little bit in there. So if you were gonna use anything else, you would use three cups. You need three cups of liquid for the eight ounces of pasta in this recipe. All right, that looks good. Now what I like to do is just go ahead and give this kind of a toss around a little bit just to get the tuna throughout the noodles so they're dispersed. All right, looks great. Now we're gonna put in the three cups of our vegetable base. Get the rest of that out of there. That's the goodness there. Oh my gosh. If you haven't tried the miners, oh. Give it a try. It's on Amazon, so I'll link to it below. All right, next thing I'm gonna add in is two tablespoons of, I'm using salted butter, but you could use unsalted. You could omit that too if you wanted to. That's no big deal. Um, but I thought it gave a little boost of flavor there, a little richness. So you may have noticed I didn't put in cream of celery soup, which is traditional in a tuna noodle casserole, or you could use a cream of mushroom, a concentrated cream of mushroom, condensed, I guess I should call it. 
It's not because we're not gonna use it. I am certainly gonna use it. I'm gonna use my own homemade uh, condensed version of a cream of celery soup because there is no dairy in this. It is super easy recipe to make. I made it in the Ninja Foodie cold and hot blender and I will definitely link to that right up there for you guys and I'll link to it below in the description so you can grab that recipe if you wanna make your own. Super delicious, super easy. But the reason why I'm not adding it right now is because I don't wanna take the chance of the liquid that's in there, which is just the water with the miner's vegetable base, getting too thick as we go under pressure and then possibly triggering that water notice. I think I would be okay if I poured it on top and didn't stir, but you know, it doesn't make any difference. I can add it afterwards and it works just as well. So that's how I'm gonna do it, just to be on the safe side. Because as the pasta cooks, it releases starches. So the liquid thickens anyway, and I don't wanna put anything else in there that might make it too thick and then trigger that water notice. All right, we're gonna turn the Ninja Foodi on, go to high pressure, take the time to two minutes and hit start. Make sure the valve in the back is to the seal position so we can go under pressure. And that is it. When the two minutes is up, we're gonna do an immediate release. We're gonna add in some veggies, add in a little bit of cream, a little bit of our soup and get to air crisping this delicious coating on top. All right, so we pressure cooked for two minutes. It took about 10 minutes for the pot to come to pressure, and then it takes about two to three minutes to release the pressure, so that's perfectly normal. And now we're gonna open up the lid and give it a little stir. So if you see some of the noodles on top and they don't look completely cooked, please do not worry. They will cook as we add in the rest of the liquid. So I'm gonna give it a nice little stir. You'll, you'll see probably about, let's say maybe about a cup of liquid down in the bottom and we want that there as well because we are gonna go under the air crisp and that's gonna blow a lot of air and kind of um, evaporate some of that liquid. So we definitely want that in there. A half of a cup of condensed cream of celery soup and I need to use some air quotes because mine doesn't have any cream in it but it works just the same. And we're gonna put in a half of a cup of heavy whipping cream. Now, if you wanted to change that up and not use heavy whipping cream, you could use a quarter cup of milk. You wouldn't want to use the whole half of a cup or it would be a little bit soupy. Two cups of frozen mixed vegetables. Now, traditionally, I think a lot of tuna noodle casseroles are either made with mushrooms and peas or just peas, but I didn't have just peas. I had this blend in the freezer when I tested the recipe, and I liked it so much that I decided to call for two cups of the mixed vegetable. But you could use peas, you could use mushrooms and peas. If you wanna use mushrooms though, I'd put them in before you pressure cook because mushrooms do really well in the pressure cooker. All right, so two cups of the frozen vegetables and we wanna put in about a one and a half cups of cheese. I have two total cups here because I wanna use half in my uh, breading mixture for the top and I'm gonna use one and a half cups in the casserole itself. That looks good. Give it all a stir. Then what I like to do while I'm getting the breading together is go ahead and turn the sear saute on and take the temp down to low medium. But this looks gorgeous. And those vegetables are definitely going to uh, soften up and cook in the air crisp time. So don't worry about that. We're getting the cheese combined in there and nicely melted. Oh, it looks perfect. All right, so we can leave that alone for a minute, so let's get our topping. So I've got that half of a cup of cheese, one cup of panko, and two tablespoons of salted butter that I melted. So I'm just gonna add in the panko. I like to add the panko in before I put the cheese in and get it combined with the butter because I really find that that's gonna give you the best crispiness to your topping. You could always increase the butter too if you wanted a super decadent topping. You could use four tablespoons, that would be no problem. All right, once that's combined, we're gonna add in that half of a cup of cheddar cheese. And you can see I use pre-shredded cheese. I don't always do that in recipes, but something like this that's one pot, you wanna make it really quick and easy. Um, using the shredded cheese works fine. There are times in recipes when pre-shredded cheese that you get in a bag will not work as well, but in this recipe it's fine. So if you have it, use it, or you can freshly um, grate your own cheese as well. 
All right, let's give this another mix to get all that cheese melted. Oh my gosh. Looks so good. Now, if you had a pressure cooker without a crisping lid, what I would do at this point is transfer these contents over to a casserole dish, put your topping on, and then either broil or bake at a high setting in your oven until it gets nice and crispy and brown. All right, that looks great. All the cheese does not have to be melted. That's perfectly fine. And now we're gonna spread on our topping. So just put an even layer over top. It's pretty important that you get all of the noodles covered with the topping. So don't go heavy in any one area. And if you see any noodles sticking up, press them down because if the air crisp gets to the noodles, it really dries them out and doesn't make them very good. All right, that looks great. Okay. All right, so we're gonna close the lid. It's gonna beep at me because it's still on the sear saute. We wanna switch over to air crisp. And we're gonna take the temperature down to 300 degrees. We want a lower temperature for this because we want to really brown the top. And we're gonna go to 15 minutes, but we don't wanna burn any places. So we want it to evenly brown at a lower temperature. That also gives the rest of the uh, casserole enough time to heat up, finish cooking those frozen vegetables. So this turned out perfect for me. If you wanted to play around with it, you certainly can, but this is what worked for me. So 300 degrees, air crisp for 15 minutes, and then we're ready to eat. All right, there we go. Well, let's take a peek. Looks perfect. Nice and brown on top. Crispy, crispy top. I love that. All right, I'm gonna dig right in. I'm not even gonna let it sit. Usually I'll let something like this sit a little bit. But I'm gonna dig right in. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. That might be a little soupier coming out than it will be if it sits, but doesn't look too bad there at all. Look at that. Oh my gosh. I think it's beautiful. I really love using the mixed vegetables because of all the different colors, but you know, use what you want, of course. I better let it cool down just a minute though. But, oh my gosh, I am so excited. I'm not even a huge fan of tuna noodle casserole, but I thought I would try it out because I have several people asking me for a recipe. So I thought, oh, I'll give it a try. Um, the first one I made, I wasn't too keen on, but uh, the second one I made was really great. I think the difference was making my own uh, cream of celery uh, concentrate. So I think it really does make a difference. But anyway, super easy to make. Let's dig in. All right, the egg noodles. Mmm, perfectly cooked. They're not overcooked, they're not mushy, they're perfect, they're al dente, I love it. Oh, this sauce is amazing. Really amazing, oh my gosh. Let me get a green bean here, because I wanna see if they're cooked all the way through, because those are the things that take the longest in that mixed vegetable mixture there. Mmm. Perfect, and they're not soft either. Mmm. All right, the best part. We all know what that is, right? The topping, definitely. This is delicious, really delicious. I'm pretty excited that I made tuna noodles. Casserole tastes good. Mmm. Wow. I am a huge fan of this version of tuna noodle casserole. Of course, you can use this technique. Switch up the ingredients and use what you like to use in your tuna noodle casserole. That's no problem at all. As always, make it yours, make it delicious, and keep it real.